today and welcome to the HER show. According to a recent Moscow report, Zimbabwe is ranked number five in terms of the most enabling supporting divisions for women. However, the report also noted that only 27.5% are female-led businesses. So we are here today at Raffles Place to interview the streets. Let's see if anyone can make a female entrepreneur. The guy from Cuba. Of one being more of a threat. The guy from one championship. Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Simon Cool. Chuck Ma. Okay. Kylie Jenner. Mr. Justin Chiu. He's the founder of uh, ARDS and Management. Oprah Winfrey. Facebook founder. Mark Zuckerberg. He's able to establish um, a police company and uh, with all the major acquisitions in the, in the industry. Able to do something uh, nice for the society. Uh, while at the same time making money for your business. They are able to innovate and create for them to step up and take a risk. I think it's a lot of uh, courage in that someone who can influence the behavior of uh, different people and to change their mindset. A lasting legacy, so setting up a company that survives the test of succession and that continues to grow. Someone who makes his own business, makes up her own business, uh, earns a lot of money for them. And I can't quite think of. I can't really think of one thing, but that's embarrassing. I don't think I can. Um, I'm so sorry, I really can't think of it right now. Um, anyone? No, I can't give you any. It's not off the top of my head. I'm sure there are plenty of big radiator records. I feel that she can really. Uh, Engage like to a rather to a very wide audience. Maybe one of our local influencers, Rachel. She has marketed herself very well on Instagram. It's rather generous, uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> because, because from my definition, I was thinking like you have your own business and then you give to society, and then she just is super generous and everything. And she always gives to the needy and everyone else. Yeah. 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 Some of these include Xie Wang from HTC, Zhang Xin from Soho, China, Solian Chao from New Kashin Foundation, Christina Go from Go Capital, Anita Ambani from the Alliance Industries. However, none of these successful Asian media entrepreneurs were at the top of my recall amongst any of our interviewees. This could be perhaps due to the lack of media coverage of these successful women entrepreneurs. We at HR Entrepreneur hope to change that. We hope to inspire, educate, and empower women entrepreneurs to harnessing the power of women in entrepreneurship, leadership, and new relationships. Okay, very good evening everyone and welcome to our HGR Learn Come Networking session that we host every month. Okay, so this is our second month for the year and um, today I just want to do a, a quick, you know, brief introduction about what we do. That was just a short video introduction. Um, so basically, HGR Entrepreneur is a uh, media platform where we inspire, educate and empower women entrepreneurs and leaders through sessions like this, through workshops and through our yearly HER Asia Summit. So in this summit, we gather SME business owners from various brands um, to come and share some of the business strategies. Um, so today, oh, we just skip like this. So I'll have her manually um, manage the slides. Okay, so um, before I go into the details, I just like to um, uh, thank our very host. So this is actually our office space. Uh, but um, uh, the co is also hosting this place for our event uh, this evening. So I'd like to thank them. Thank you. Um, and today's topic is about influencing millennials. And uh, we are going to talk about how it comes 
understand the consumer behavior of these millennials and how we can convert some of the followers into skills. All right, so we'd like to invite our speakers here. So first of all, we will have um, Yong Weikai. He is actually the founder of SG Cafe Hopping since 2014 and he has evolved into a platform covering restaurants and hidden gems. Okay, so he has worked with several brands such as Tian Kong, Yugen, and Sweet Monster, among many others. All right, we'll share a little bit more about yourself later. And next up, we'll also like to welcome Sally Yo. Now, Sally Yo is a lifestyle and travel influencer, creating content for a micro blog, very Sally ish, with over 120,000 followers across all the social media platforms. And uh, her first YouTube video has actually garnered over 1 million views to date. So she has worked with several international brands such as Hilton Hotels, Jetstar Asia, and Shopee. Okay, she's also currently a digital marketing manager with the app. And last but not least, we'd like to invite Tatiana from Menko. Now, Tatiana is actually the founder of Singapore Guidebook. And um, she lives in Russia. Tatiana got a rare opportunity to study Indonesian language. And, and her life changed ever since. So today she can speak Bahasa Indonesia, okay? So you can test her later if you want. And um, she's running a magazine about Singapore. So she's attracting a lot of millennial tourists um, from Indonesia to come visit Singapore, all right? So uh, without much uh, further ado, I'll let every one of these uh, speakers who give a brief introduction about uh, yourself, why you do what you do, what inspired you really. Okay, I'll start with you first. Hi guys, I'm Wei Kai from SG Cafe Hopping. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for taking your time uh, to come down. I know, I bet, did anybody like grab something before I talk? I think everybody did something. Yeah, so, uh, actually, uh, I really like food as, as you can see from my size. <laughs> yeah, and back then when uh, the cafe hop scene was very trendy in Singapore, yes. and because I'm a like, very huge fan of cafe hopping, uh, I would travel around with my friends to like, to different cafes and then uh, I needed an avenue to plan down all my experiences and that's how I started uh, actually cafe hopping. Also, um, actually cafe hopping actually is like a hobby of mine. Uh, for full time, actually I'm a digital consultant. So basically I help a lot of different FNB brands um, to build on their base as well as uh, social media content. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Hi everybody. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming down today. Um, I just want to say this is going to be brief, right? So, <laughs> I'll try to keep it short. Huh? I like to say my long stories. So I actually got into this um, entirely by accident. What happened was uh, I was in my final year of uni and um, I was being hit hunted by a PR agency. And um, what my at that time my boss said was that um, he didn't understand why a person who wanted to go into PR marketing didn't have social media, right? So actually, uh, it might seem ironic, but I'm a very private person. <laughs> so I'm a very private person. I did not have Instagram and Facebook as of 2016. So what happened in 2016 was that I set up my first Instagram account, and then it really just blew up from there. Yeah, so entirely by accident, I would say, uh, but I've learned so much along the way, and it has really lent itself to my career. So uh, right now I'm in digital marketing and PR. So it's great to, to see both sides of the picture because I'm on the back end side and I'm also on the media side of things. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Tatiana and uh, I'm writing the magazine about Singapore in Bahasa Indonesia. As you know, there are a lot of Indonesian travelers coming uh, every year, every day, <coughs> every week to Singapore. Uh, so I also got into this by accident. So uh, basically, I'm Russian by origin, and um, uh, I back in Russia, I got the, an opportunity to uh, to learn Bahasa Indonesia. Basically, I got a scholarship from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, and uh, they were paying for my studies. So because of that, they said said to me that you don't have a choice of language that you will learn. So we don't have enough staff in the Russian embassy in Jakarta, and you will learn Bahasa. And at the time, I was like 17 years old. So I, I didn't even know where Indonesia is and 
I uh, was very surprised, but it uh, really completely changed my life. And uh, then I uh, had a chance to live in Indonesia for some time. I uh, really fell in love with this country, with the people. And then when I moved to Singapore, I wanted to work with the Indonesian market. I still wanted to, um, to speak Bahasa, not to forget it. And uh, I really also <coughs> admire Singapore. I love Singapore. So I can combine these two uh, uh, passions of mine uh, into the magazine. And now I'm helping Indonesians to understand more about Singapore. And really, uh, my mission is to show them that Singapore is not only about like Marina Bay Sands, Virgin Road, but it has so many things to offer. And Singapore is never a boring country. So that's, in short, what I do. Thank you. Fantastic. So I've got a question. Since all of you are millennials, right? And millennials yourself. Could you share with us? Because my I'm sense. sure there are several uh, business owners out there and um, we're wondering how they can target millennials better. So as a millennial's point of view, um, how would you like to be you know, sold to, you know, in terms of data, it's mostly B2C as a consumer. Um, what kind of content would you be attuned to? Um, what sort of marketing uh, activities or strategies, you know, businesses could learn or should learn? Um, something that you could share as a millennial consumer yourself. Um, do you have a perspective? Yeah, maybe you can start. Okay, personally, I think that millennials have like a very short uh, span of attention. So basically, you have to capture their attention, have to churn out content that is more relevant to them, and then uh, with a very visually appealing uh, content. Mm -hmm. So uh, for most businesses, right, I think instead of uh, focusing on like the numbers or the following, instead you guys should uh, more focus on your uh, branding as well as the voice they want to uh, uh, portray to the to the audience itself. I mean, if you don't even know your own branding, how like, how are you supposed to like translate that to the audience itself? So I think something to work with is your branding, your content, as well as uh, relevancy and coherence. that with millennials, uh, so like, like what helped us uh, to build a big community on Instagram especially is that we created a sense of community uh, on our platforms and we even have a hashtag like Singapore Great Book Family so when everyone who follows us they consider themselves like a part of something big not just like following some kind of like uh, random project but also like a family so they even like share this hashtag everywhere so it's also additional um, exposure for us as well. Yeah, so I guess I'll distill it down to two main portions which is value and engagement. So definitely um, as a millennial myself and also working with a lot of brands, um, value is something that we really look at. There's so many choices out there now that you really have to target uh, who you want to deliver value to and deliver exactly the kind of value that they want. Like uh, for example, I, I hate shopping. I am not a consumer. I'm the worst consumer you can possibly find. But at the same time, how do brands get me to part with my money is really providing the kind of value that you know I see and I judge this value through reviews. I judge this value through uh, social proof. Uh, I see whether my friends are using it. And then you know we do so much research now before we even buy like a washing machine or it's insane. So that that's the value we provide. And then second of all, which is engagement, I completely agree with you. We like to be engaged. So for, for my friends who do a bit more shopping, they, they like to they like to um, participate in what their brands are doing. So marketing, right, with the with the advent of the internet, it has turned into a two-way kind of thing. It's no longer just one way you're looking at a poster, you're looking at an advertisement. It's a two-way thing. You are involved in the advertisement itself. It's amazing. So right now, you are actually advertising for all the brands that you're wearing, all the brands that you're using. So people want to do that. They want to feel like, okay, I love this brand. I want to be an ambassador for the brand. So you know, get ambassadors, get brand ambassadors out there. Get people who look like your target audience, are your target, are your, are your clients to to um, stand up, speak for you, uh, use hashtags, use giveaways, whatever. Anybody can be a spokesperson for you. Yeah. So I think those are the two main takeaways um, that I will have for you guys. Okay. So I mean, you guys started your journey uh, quite recently. I mean, not too long ago for you, 2014 or sadly 2016. And um, for Singapore Guidebook. 2017, very recent. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, can you share with us how did you manage to 
grow your, you know, the number of followers, right? What is it in your content? What is it that we could learn from, you know, and implement in our business? That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, like what I said earlier, uh, I like I like food. So basically, I work as study trends. So for example, for the food industry, like right, you know, there's like a lot of uh, different trends that's upcoming. For example, the salted egg trend. And then you know, just have to predict the different trends that are coming, and then you have to come up with a uh, more engaging and more kind of um, appealing kind of content that resonates with your uh, readers as well. So for me, growing the number actually is not my main focus. I think churning out uh, relevant content for my readers, something that they are more interested in, and staying true to my own brand is the most important part of my journey itself. Yeah. So what made it grow? I guess with uh, Relevant content and with more um, relevant content, and then people start sharing. That's how we started. Okay. So my question is also there are a lot of food bloggers out there. Anytime we can food blog, right? So today we have a session, then we have some food, we take some pictures, go on Instagram, right? So how do you differentiate yourself from other bloggers? And why would a follower want to read your content versus another food blogger's content? So basically, my food blog is more personalized. I feel so. If you go and check out actually cafe hopping, it's like how would say like a, you know like a conversation kind of content. So, so it's not like oh uh, this cafe is blah blah blah. But mine is more of like my personal feel to it. So uh, it's not so I would say corporate kind of thing. Like it's like a you know for sure this article is always like sponsored. Mine is a bit different. It's like a friend recommendation. Friend recommendation as I think. Yeah. So the influencers friends. Yeah, so me and Sally are friends, exactly. <laughs> I really shut up by this. So she recommends me cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I feel also is like the pictures that I take. Of course, uh, for millennials, right, we're talking about them. One thing to capture their attention is really the visual ones. If your visual doesn't like, capture the, the attention, right, they won't even bother to look at your content. So for me, picture-wise, I prefer something more vibrant. Yeah, so it makes you happier, I guess. Facebook page and still their followers, but how, how do you target them? You target them with advertisements. 
It's okay. literally a function of Facebook ads. If you guys who have done Facebook ads, you target them. Like you literally, I want to target Starbucks followers. And you target them straight away. So it's, that's why I say it's a, it's, a, it's a secret. But at the same time, it's not a secret. Every marketer knows that. It's all about targeting. Yes. But, but I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm very excited. It's available on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram, you can go in and see your friends' followers, can't you? Right? You can yeah. separate to the ads or not the ads. It's dependent on you. Yeah, exactly. So that, that is the secret. Right? <coughs> I, I think many people will kill, might kill me for, for actually just <laughs> revealing the secret. Huh. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, right now, yeah, okay. <laughs> But that, that really is the open secret and it doesn't make so much sense because you're just targeting the people you want to target, you cannot blanket target, you cannot want the whole world to want your product. Yeah. Uh, so I can just share our story on uh, how we grew, grew our Instagram, especially so I think it's ba really the uh, base, uh, like the the, uh, the most important thing before you start growing your account is of course to create a really useful content and because Instagram is such a visual platform of course you need to ensure that for, for example in our case our target is Indonesians, Indonesian travelers, millennials and of course we know that uh, they like Instagramable places so that's why they, we make sure that we feature Instagramable places and of course they want to know where exactly this place is, how to get there and we make sure that we get uh, uh, detailed information like we uh, write really informative blog posts uh, and we know that our audience really likes uh, to read it so in this crowded uh, Instagram world you need to make sure that uh, you really, your content is really um, really stands out and you really need to invest a lot of time into creating a, a very useful uh, content um, uh, yeah, very useful content in your field and after that, after you create the content what we did is that um, like we targeted, we did targeting uh, but not uh, like, like uh, Sally said uh, we just uh, we knew our audience that, um, so we basically did the uh, Instagram yeah, geographical, like uh, Instagram ads. So we invested quite a lot of money into the ads and we just uh, targeted the right people, like uh, Indonesians uh, from 24 to 35 and they they like, uh, they're interested in Singapore. It means that they uh, often search things like about Singapore, you know. So it really brought us a lot of uh, followers. And another thing is that we did a lot of giveaways so we also invested some money or uh, we found some sponsors who were willing to sponsor the um, trip to Singapore for the winners. And uh, we did a giveaway right now, we are doing it and uh, it's like um, amazing results because Indonesian uh, travelers are like free, free stuff and everyone yeah, likes free stuff. <laughs> so this is something that also really brought us a lot of, a lot of followers. So you mentioned about spending some money besides time to create content, right? You talk about advertisements and all that. Come, share with us, when you first launch your platform, um, what sort of marketing budget do you put in, right, um, to do that, to, to promote the platform? And then along the way, you know, you're a bit more established, um, then how much budget do you put in? Is it month on month? How much? How do you track performance? Okay, so all of you will have to answer that. So Tatiana first. Okay, so when uh, we started uh, the, uh, our Instagram account, we didn't invest much uh, because I was still believing in the power of hashtags and all this, but actually it doesn't really work nowadays. I think, I don't know. It depends. It depends on your niche. Yeah, yeah it depends. But in our way, in our uh, case, it didn't work so well. So we were investing like, um, I don't know, maybe um, monthly, maybe we invested like $200 only. So it didn't uh, work well for us, but then we discovered that, that we really need to invest, if you want followers, we need to invest uh, money into uh, um, putting our content out there and uh, promoting it. So now, um, okay, so now we invest around uh, $200 uh, USD per week uh, for Instagram ads. And it really gives us like per week, we, uh, because in, on Instagram you can see statistics and everything like click through rate or uh, how much money you are paying for one click. So now uh, they are seeing like um, I would say around one hundred, one thousand uh, to one thousand five hundred followers every week uh, by putting this money in, into our. Uh, 
will spend maybe about the same as what she's spending on the brand. Yeah, especially for a startup, yeah, 2017. So for a startup kind of thing, I would say her budget is around there. Yeah, because you need to put in more money simply because you are earning money um, from, you're making a profit from your, from your, from your goods, from your businesses. Meanwhile, for personal branding, it's not always about money. You know, my, my, my images are not always sponsored. So you know, sometimes I'm just taking, I'm just creating content for the sake of creating content because I want to create content, right? I'm not selling anything. So in a way, uh, I would say that for brands, right, um, you will need to invest a little bit more to see the ROI. I think, same like Sally, uh, I think I invest more time uh, on my blog as well instead of uh, campaign. So how do I grow my following or how to make people share more is that uh, sometimes when I write an article, right, the brand itself will share an article, then they will post it themselves. So that's how uh, I gain my following as well. And I want to like, clarify one uh, that uh, the number of uh, money that invested doesn't correlate to the number of uh, people who clicks on your own thing. So for SMEs, right, I believe you guys have a like, very tight marketing budget. So rather than uh, investing money in one shot, I would, I would still suggest that you guys work on your uh, relevant content itself. So with relevant content, right, uh, when you do targeting, it's easier. Yeah. Rather than you do a mass one. It doesn't really work that way because millennials know that oh, this person is going to sell me something. They are not very attracted to it. So I guess uh, for SMEs especially, uh, work on your content. And I would suggest uh, coming out of the content calendar, Connect like a quarterly content calendar to know what you guys are going to post on social media. So at the end of the day, right, social media is just a tool for you guys to use. So it really depends on what kind of uh, business you guys are doing. So for example, your business might, might need LinkedIn, or some businesses might need uh, Instagram or Facebook. So you guys should know where you guys stand. So social media is a tool. Yeah. Are you guys on LinkedIn? Uh, yes. Yes. How I think for LinkedIn, right, in Singapore, say, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's more for, you know, like, uh, people finding for work, yeah. Or if, if your company is, like, investors, right, yeah, LinkedIn is a very good platform to, to build that uh, base. Yes. B2B, especially. Yes. Yeah, I think um, because it's B2B, so I don't have a B to sell for a B, so, yeah. <laughs> it's more personal. Okay, because our company is, is B2B, so basically the, uh, our business model is that we are attracting uh, Singapore companies like uh, hotels, restaurants who want to um, show their brand to Indonesian tourists. Uh, that's why, of course, we need to be on LinkedIn. So we have a company profile on LinkedIn and we sometimes post, uh, post some articles um, in English. Yeah, and uh, personally, I find many leads uh, from LinkedIn as well. Yeah, sure. So actually, when she was talking about that, it just uh, led me back to the, the same, it's actually linked to the budget that you need for personal accounts and for company accounts. Because when you have a company page, right, the algorithm naturally puts you at back, right? So, which is why I would say uh, a lot, for a lot of startups and SMEs uh, that I consult with, they, I would put the founder as, as the main PR person, because like me, <laughs> so because because it's so much easier to build a person than a brand than a company, right? So if you have a business page on Instagram, they're gonna put you behind people, real people, so people page. So I would say you know if if you want to start if you are an SME startup, put yourself as the face. You know, um, like how Gary Vaynerchuk is the face of Vayner Media, um, Neil Patel is the face of whatever his company is. No idea, I just know him. Right? So it's much easier to follow a person than to follow a company. I, I think I totally agree on, on that. Um, so it depends how you want to position yourself as a person. I realize that uh, on LinkedIn, right, if you create the company page, profile page, like how you do for Facebook, and you start posting there, you don't see much responses. But if the founder does so themselves, they get a lot of interactions from people, comments, uh, if that's your target audience, B2B or even professionals. It can be B2C, but your target audience are professionals, right? And we talk about different tactics to market. So they talk about um, even contests, free giveaways. I mean, we experimented on that as well, just to share some thoughts about that. 
we realized that the people, the very people um, who actually uh, participated in the contest may not be the correct buyers eventually, right? So do understand that there are certain crowd, right, in our social media, they just go to as many platforms as possible to get freebies, right? So if your purpose is just to increase following, just to increase following, just to increase engagement, you can do that because that is quite effective. Um, but in terms of really converting it to sales later on, those people may not necessarily be the ones who will really buy. However, if you have a, a Facebook page, right, and you see that okay, you have followers there, it's not just it's not just that followers. You need to see who uh, in your uh, list are actually active followers, active um, you know people who actually like your page. Uh, they comment things, they share things with people. They go to your events, um, they, they share things about uh, what you do to their friends. So that is, I think, uh, very valuable uh, when it comes to social media marketing. Yeah, Jan. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you could also share, like, uh, I'm just wondering how did you get so many followers on LinkedIn, on your personal accounts? <laughs>
So in my opinion, there are two types of bloggers, like lifestyle blogger and uh, expert blogger. So in our case, we want to be we position ourselves as experts about Singapore. So uh, in our case, we need to, uh, to post more informational con uh, information content, like uh, places to go in Singapore, places to stay. So and uh, some like 80% of informational content and content and. 20% of like fun, content, short posts, something like that to keep readers engaged. Uh, and if you are a lifestyle blogger, the, I, I think the approach should, should be a bit different. Um, and once you found your passion, once you found what kind of blogger you want to be, um, of course uh, you need to create um, a really um, a content which stands out. Uh, like I mentioned before, that now it's uh, too crowded and you really need to put so much effort to really stand out and uh, then of course uh, like uh, keep uh, just keep in mind all our advice that we gave previously on how to like um, market your content how to promote your content and 